Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to my Monday Night Raw review. Uh, a lot of big things kicking off on the show tonight. Pretty much with Stephanie McMahon coming out. Hasn't been seen on Raw in over like a year or two, I believe. She came out and talked about saying Triple H will not compete, and she didn't get care what these people wanted. That Curtis Axel is beneath Triple H. He's nothing compared to Triple H. And he would not compete tonight, saying the people are selfish as people chanted for Triple H and booed at her. And then Vince McMahon came out talking about you guys cheer for saying one more time for Kofi for a go through table. There would not be one more time with Triple H. And Vince McMahon pretty much says he's not going to compete tonight. Don't boo with his daughter. This is not a blood sport, he says. This is a family show. Listen, Vince, at the end of the day, no matter how many times you want this to be such a family thing, you have to remember this professional wrestling. This is a blood sport. It's technically supposed to be a blood sport, not a family show, a blood sport. And if you, if two guys are going to be in the ring every week, duking it out, and any type of stipulation match or any type of whatever at a pay-per-view, cage, no disqualification, I don't care. That is not no fan. That, that proves that's a blood sport. Not family entertainment. It's not supposed to be family entertainment. But the PG marks try to can take over everything. So, I don't know. You gotta watch that sometimes. We pretty much said Triple H was not, not going to compete. And then, the Shields music hit. Vince and Stephanie have already left. Because it kind of went to commercial when the Shield came out. Pretty much then... When the Shield came out, the match tonight they were in was against Randy Orton and Team Hell No. Pretty much a good match, I'll say that. Really, really good match. Orton got a huge pop coming in there. Daniel Bryan, we'll cut say, man. Da Daniel Bryan was on fire tonight. Daniel Bryan, man. The dude is was going nuts out there like he did on SmackDown last Friday. Uh, pretty much, Ryan was on, pretty much on a killer in the ring. Did you hear that? He's like, yeah, they hear that clothesline yet, and that Frankensteiner he, he did on Seth Rollins landing in the Roman Reigns, and that clothesline on Dean Ambrose was crazy. I gotta say that the, the match is really good. Shield pretty much picked up the win. Orton tried to go for RKO on Reigns, but pushed him into Brian. Ambrose did his finisher. Shield picked up the win. I got some six man tag tag match. He involved in the Shield or Daniel Bryan. Is just too crazy, and it is awesome. Just awesome. And he pretty much in the back, Kane kept talking about um. And Dan Bryan kept saying he wasn't the weak link, and think Orton and Kane would blame him. Nobody wasn't blaming him, and Orton and Dan Bryan got to beat the respect out of somebody tonight, so he would do that. Triple H was had arrived and started arguing with Vince and Steph. Pretty much, I wouldn't say we got bitched out by Vince and stuff, saying, you're not going to compete tonight. It's ha not happening. Go home. He is cleared to wrestle, though, technically, but he says, you will not fight him tonight. It's not going to happen. The Usos, with some new face paint, I guess, to finally reinvent themselves a little. Went against the primetime players. Usos went against them. Uh, they pretty much um, won. I guess they're trying to remake themselves or something. Even though Raw, I heard, had to compete with uh, the NBA game nights. It's the game seven. Um, Alberto Del Rio went against B. Langston for the fifth time. Langston picked up the win. Very interesting finish. Langston had to cross arm break him, but was able to get, um, I guess, um, B. Langston tried to lift his legs out of there, and Del Rio caught it and got the pin and won the match. So, yeah, still waiting for Dolph Ziggler to come back. So, interesting finish. Sheamus went against Cody Rhodes. Sheamus beat Cody Rhodes. So, I don't know. I guess you come out to Sandow. Listen, these, these Damien Sandow things on Friday need to stop. This is kind of getting to some very bad boring segments with Sheamus just acting like a goofball like usual. And even Sandow, I don't know why they have him doing the whole spin, you know, whatever it was called, shell game or something with the ball and the three cups. I don't know why they keep doing that. Then Triple H was in the back again with Stephanie. Stephanie's going to argue with him. Triple H says, you better go control him because you better not see his kids beat the, pretty much kick Vince's ass tonight. Even though it's been done many a times for on live TV tonight. And I don't, I don't know. Triple H pretty much threw his bag in the back and he left. And he, he was leaving and he said next week he will fight Curtis Axel in the ring next week he says. He will fight him. But Triple H kind of got, I wouldn't say got punked out by Steph 
and Vince, even though they said it was an executive decision to why Triple H couldn't wrestle tonight. Brian pretty much went throughout the back kicking stuff, and Ryback showed up saying, You mad, huh? You there? You kind of idiot. And he said, You talk about the weak link, you'll be the missing link. So, so it'll be like the missing link wrestler then. I, I don't know, but he, it was going to be a challenge with Ryback and uh, Daniel Bryan tonight. Uh, Curtis Axel and Paul Heyman in the back. They shook Vince McMahon's hand, Axel. And Vince McMahon even said himself, There will be no match with Triple H and Curtis Axel even next week. But it will be a match with John Cena tonight in a no disqualification match. And Dango went against Craig, Great Kali. Uh, Great Kali, I guess, won by count out since Miz had blocked um, Fandango from getting to the ring, and, from getting to the back. But then Wade Barrett came out and bull hammered Miz, and Fandango got away saying, Do you want some too, and everything. Then Miz went against Wade Barrett, and then Fandango's music hit. And this I yelled Miz, and Miz hit the figure four and won since Barrett was distracted. So, there's a lot of things that will make sense right here. Miz blocked Fandango, but Barrett helped Fandango. But then again, Fandango helps Miz, and Miz beats Barrett. Very strange way, but it's kind of more interesting to see how both three of these guys will go for the Intercontinental title now. Um, Lawler called out Jericho and Heyman for the contract signing. Talking about Paul Heyman, talking about CM Punk is the best in the world. And talking about the match in Chicago. In a couple of weeks, and Jericho said, "Can we do this at SummerSlam or in the Garden?" But it was gonna have it in Chicago, he says. And I see him Punk say, oh, "Hammer says CM Punk would beat beat him." And the segment was, yeah, they signed the contract, and CM Punk says he's gonna make you know lies because in Chicago, Jericho won't get that crowd reaction because uh, around here, like in Chicago, we're all gonna be with CM Punk, and we know that, so. We're all going to be with CM Punk and everything. So, uh, yeah. Damn. Um, so, pretty much that was going to happen. So, Heyman. When he, so, pretty much uh, CM Punk, pretty much Jericho told Heyman to get up. And he took the contract and shoved it in his pants. So, kind of, even though this feud was done last year, like I said many times before, it'll still be a good match with CM Punk and, um, CM Punk and Paul Heyman. So, I'm uh, not CM Punk and Paul CM Punk and Chris Jericho. My mistake. I got a little distracted right there. But it should be a good match like usual. AJ and the Bella Twins when it gets Caitlyn and um, the Funk and Dactyls. Caitlyn and them won. So, yeah. Hey, I guess it went on. It, 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 when I looked in the crowd, it, like nobody didn't react that well. Nobody even like really reacted when they came. When I just heard the music, like there was no crowd reaction with the divas. Like usually, that's why nobody's gonna watch this show when they get annoying. Nobody's gonna watch it. No one. And then Kane talked to Daniel Bryan in the back. Kane says, "Don't ask for my Daniel Bryan went around. He told him to get out." Kane said, "Release." So, yeah. Right back. Then went against Daniel Bryan, which I have to say was pretty much the awesomest match of the night. Seeing Daniel Bryan two times it was brutal out there, I tell you. Bryan was going in crazy on Ryback, but pretty much ended in disqualification. Ryback power bombing uh, Daniel Bryan onto a table and setting up another table on the side. But then Cena came out and helped and cursed action music hit. Pretty much they took up a lot of time, especially for this match, but I, I enjoyed the. Um, Right back in Daniel Bryan match. One hell of a match. Very great match tonight by these two. John Cena went to Curtis Axel the nose qualification match. Which like I said, Curtis Axel held his ground out there, some good moves. Especially with the chairs a lot and everything, so yeah. Pretty much beat them like that and Yeah, they pretty much beat them, so Honestly, I have to say about this match with Curtis Axel and John Cena, though. Oh, first off, why was it won by Countout? If it was Countout last week, and this is a no disqualification match, what if Ryback could have just speared John Cena through the table, then threw him back in the ring, and that could have been better instead of the whole... 
and by count out again like I didn't even see why it was count out I, I that didn't make no sense it's a no disqualification match why is there a count out in a no disqualification match that makes no sense none of that does but overall about this show this show was yeah The show is just, you know, it was a good show now. So I just had to think on my thoughts about it real quick. But it was a good show from its parts and parts. Daniel Bryan and Ryback put on a hell of a match. Daniel Bryan was out there two times tonight, but I don't know if they're gonna do Triple H and Kurt Axel next. Curtis Axel next week, even though they don't want to. And he's Wyatt. Family promos, which is awesome. Make sure you guys go check out NXT with right back. I'm sorry, with uh, um, Bray Wyatt versus Chris Jericho on NXT. If you don't know about Bray Wyatt, I've been knowing who he was. I just didn't know that we were going to bring him in, but they are bringing him in now, like I said probably last week in the video. But uh, once again, comment, subscribe. You know it's me, it's me, DH Double OD. Come here with the news and reviews. You know, running like a seesaw. We're done with this review of Monday Night Raw. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace.